come along while I spend Patron on this microphone. Watch out, I'm in the zone, worth for everything I own. Life is March Madness, one mistake, then you go. Yeah, I had a stroke, but your boy still rhyming. And fresh got love, but the squad's still wildin'. Catch me in any city in the hood, we grindin'. What's up, Fight Fam, and welcome to Boxing Bros. Since most of us have the day off from a snowstorm, we decided to tap in and make some videos. I'm Kaden, I'm here with my co-host. What's going on, this is Trill. This is G. TBE, what up, bro? That was a very subdued TBE, but he's going to get excited for this next topic. Eddie Hearn says that Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua will fight with or without the belts. Take a listen. Well, in a second. I thought I already pulled this up. All right, here we go. It's pulled up and ready to go. Ooh. After you get that breather and a couple beers, everyone wants to talk about the possibility of Joshua versus Tyson Fury. But there's obviously uh, Alexander Usyk who could stand in the way if that title, the WBO, I believe, uh, has to be vacated if he doesn't defend first against Usyk. His manager said that they'd be willing to listen to a step-aside offer. If you were his manager, what would the monetary figure be that would satisfy you? Say, all right, you two go at it. We'll wait for the winner. Um, you know, I'll obviously work very close to Alexander Usyk, and Igis Klimas is, you know, I class him as a friend. They're in a strong position where they know they're the mandatory challenger. But at the same time, we have a fight on our hands and sorry to the governing bodies, that eclipses all belts. And we just got to be a little bit careful because you may be on the verge of going, do you know what? Let's just get rid of politics right now. Let's just drop all the belts. Because if we lose one belt, we might as well lose them all. And then you have to pay sanctioning. Exactly. And step aside. <laughs> so, you know, it gets to a stage where you've got the biggest fight in world boxing. You're paying each governing body hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now you've got another guy who probably wants seven figures to step aside. So we just got to be careful because ultimately the aim of this fight has always been to be for the undisputed championship. When Anthony Joshua came into my office many years ago, that was always the dream. And we will do whatever we can to make sure that every belt in boxing is on the line in the Tyson Fury fight. What we won't be and we, what we won't do is we won't be held to ransom and we won't let politics get involved in a, in a fight that boxing needs, right? We've been, uh, yeah, we've done YouTube events, right? You saw the other day, Mike Tyson against Roy Jones do a fantastic number on pay-per-view. 1.8 million. Exactly, supposedly. <laughs> if, 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 we, if we don't start making these kind of fights, then that kind of thing will become the norm. I don't mind it, sprinkled in. But we have to remember what is great about our sport, and that is the best versus the best. 2021 needs to bring us Joshua against Fury. 2021 needs to bring us Chocolatito against Estrada. 2021 needs to bring us Errol Spence against Terence Crawford. And we don't mind saying fighters on our platform, The Zone, who are with other platforms because we want the best fights and we have to continuously try and raise the bar otherwise people will get bored with the sport and find an alternative. So belts or no belts, you will see Fury against Joshua. But we hope that... <clears throat> so there it is. Belts or no belts, you will see Fury versus Joshua. Trill Dollar Bill, what's your thoughts on all the comments Eddie Hearn made? I like the smoke. I mean, not like literally, but... <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> but pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I like all the smoke that uh, uh, Eddie Hearn is bringing. Um, at first, when he said, we're going to have the fight with no belts, had me like, whoa, hey, the whole thing is to have all the belts so we can go undisputed. But then when he was like, we would not be hold ransom, I thought that that was boss talk. And I thought, I was like, big ups to Eddie. You know what I'm saying? Because this is what we've been talking about at the Boxing Bros all along. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying, we got to put these guys in a place, these um, organizations, these uh, sanctioning bodies and all that for these belts. Sometimes we got to put them in place and let them know sometimes these fighters are bigger than the belts, you know, and some of these guys, they be uh, these sanctioning bodies in these uh, for these belts. <clears throat> they be talking like they be stepping in these rings. So I, I love the fact that um, Eddie Hearn is saying like with or without the belts and paying all these thousand dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars in sanctioning fees, we'll make the fight happen and y'all will suffer. 
Because say if, for example, the fighters made a fighter's belt. And it was something that was just for, you know, just the fighters. You didn't have to pay no sanctioning fee. You won and you earned it, right? That will take all, all these other guys and knock them out of business. If they do this, if they do this and they pull this big old fight off and they say, forget all the belts, watch how many other people follow suit. Watch how many people follow suit because it's starting to become disgusting with the belts and people are getting tired of all this crap with these belts. It's like 30 belts for one weight class. How are you fighting at 130 and there's like 10 other belts at that one weight class? The same shanks in body. People is getting sick and tired of their mess. They're getting sick and tired of their greed. And I bet you if AJ and Tyson Fury and Eddie Hearn, they pull this off, watch how many other fighters follow suit. And I bet you the, uh, uh, these sanctioning by these belts, I bet you they start singing a new tune. They start cutting down these prices on these on these belts too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> these sanctioning fees. That's just how I feel. I think that is good talk for me. All right, G. Yeah. I'm looking at it from a different angle. Um, first, let me say this, though. Seeing that y'all calling me an AJ hater, I hope y'all calling Eddie Hearn a Mike Tyson hater. Because that was hate, you know what I'm saying? That little slide jab that he hit Mike Tyson with, I'm like, yo, come on, man. Those are good numbers, man, allegedly. Like, stop it. You know what I mean? But anyways, back to the time. That wasn't Eddie. That was uh the guy, the other guy. I forget his name. Oh, that said allegedly? Uh, yeah, it wasn't Eddie. Oh, I thought it was Eddie. Look at you trying to bring the smoke to AJ's camp, yo. To, uh, to Eddie. Eddie. Eddie's the one who said 1.8 as because he's not disputing the numbers. Yeah, but. Whoever, mm. you know what I'm saying? Eddie's still hating. You know why? Because he said, oh, he was sitting there. because we ain't getting a big <laughs> fight, we getting Mike Tyson and Roy Jones. That's hate. Man, oh, man. He feel comfortable saying that around Eddie. You know? oh, the disrespect, son. The disrespect. You know what I mean? But anyways, back to what I was saying. Now, what I think Eddie is saying is, hey, listen, we could drop that WBO belt. And this is why. Usyk's already signed the match room. So even if that's the only belt that's holding back undisputed right now, right? So it's like, hey, yo, listen, we're not going to pay no seven figures or whatever for 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 Usyk. Bro, Usyk signed to him. You know what I'm saying? They could just be like, all right, my, uh, what was it? Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua. It doesn't have to be undisputed. Just be a mega fight. And then whoever wins, I'm hoping it be AJ. AJ versus Usyk for undisputed. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, you can still pitch Usyk, undisputed cruiserweight champion versus the, the, the top dog in the heavyweight division. It's a win-win for Eddie. So now Eddie doesn't have to pay Usyk X amount of millions of dollars for step-aside money. He could threaten the WBO like, yo, listen, we're going to have this fight with or without y'all. If y'all want to strip AJ and get that belt to Usyk, that's cool. Usyk is under um, our camp. All we got to do is say, hey, you know what, AJ, you just fight Usyk next. And you know Usyk's going to take that fight. Because why? AJ is the cash cow of the division. So AJ is going to get undisputed regardless, as long as he, well, I'm not going to say regardless. Because these are some two difficult fights, right? Fury and Usyk. But however, he still has the possibility of becoming undisputed. So like to me, when Eddie's talking that boss talk, like Trill was saying, it sounds cute. But I think he's only talking like that. It's because of Usyk being under matchroom. Don't you think that's too many what's the names, though? Too many what's the names? Too many. <laughs> Dude. See, that's an insider. That's an insider. I got to let the people know. <laughs> there was a time when I couldn't stand being around trails. Because all he would say is, can you pass me the what's the name from the what's the name? Or can you get the what's the name from the what's the name? And I used to look at this dude like, what the hell are you talking about? Grab the what's the name from behind the what's the name and bring the what's the name down here to the joint. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that Trill's getting back to his old ways with yeah, the what's the name. What I was meaning, like, don't you, don't G, I, I'm rocking with you, G, but I was like, don't you think that's a little too, too, too many fights to get to Undisputed where it could just be one fight to get to Undisputed? That's so, all right, because I'm going to possibility he can lose to a Tyson Fury. Yeah, but I'm under the impression that AJ does want Undisputed, right? Mm -hmm. But however, when the opportunity is present, right, where it's like, yo, everybody wants to see you face Tyson Fury, right? Like, he has to do it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, 
if one sanctioned body is like, nah, yo, we've been holding back for too long. You need to fight uh, Usyk first, or you got to get Usyk to agree, right? And if Eddie's like, yo, Usyk's like, nah, bro, I want me a cool five or cool 10 million or something crazy. Eddie's like, yo, yo, relax, bro. Like, we don't even have to do that with you. We could just literally say, all right, WBO, strip us. Give it to Usyk. And then, and Usyk, <laughs> guess what? You'll fight Anthony Joshua next. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and this is the reason why, like, AJ's a little different, right? Because I know he wants Undisputed because I'm assuming he wants to be in the history books, right? He wants to be that guy with all the belts because that's historic, right? But if that can't happen with the Fury fight, right? It can happen in his next fight. You know what I mean? It literally can happen because Usyk is already signed to match room. So that's why I'm like, I don't think Eddie's, Eddie's talking spicy. But yeah, I agree. I just think there's just too much. And we know history of boxing, right? Like we got we have Dillian to, to help us out with this, right? Where we think ahead and then something happens. Like, say, for example, the WBO say, you know what, we're gonna strip Joshua and we're gonna let Usyk fight for the vacant belt against uh hmm. oh got you. They're not just gonna hand it to him. No, that's a good point. That is a good point. And then now, homie, he lost, and now we gotta go play back catch now. You know what I'm saying? Because he's probably the guy that he lost to is signed to somebody else now. And now we're, you know what I'm saying? That's all I was saying. But I totally agree with what you're saying. Yo, I agree with what you're saying. I'm just trying to get all angles. You know what I'm saying? But, like, let's just be real. The belts really don't matter, right? They're really trinkets. Not when it comes to these guys. Yeah. Like, even think about it. Even the losers, like a, a, a Dillian White or Derek Chisora, still getting huge fights. You know what I'm saying? With or without belts. So none of these things really matter. Because when you think of the heavyweight division, you're really always thinking like the three-headed monster and maybe the top 10, right? So as long as the top 10 fight each other, nobody really cares. The only thing is, it was like an extra selling point. Undisputed. All the belts, including the belts that really don't matter. So it was like all seven, eight, nine, ten belts was all on the line at one moment. So it's a cute marketing ploy. However, it's like, hey, if one governing body does not want to play ball, yo, I, I, hey, man, if I'm Eddie, I'm like, all right, well, we're not paying the ransom because that's what it really is. It is a ransom, right? It's like you want us to pay seven figures to a dude that's already down with our squad. Like, get out of here, bro. We're not doing that. Yeah, hell yeah. They bigger than the belts. Mm -hmm. All right, Ned. All right. So much was just said just now. And I want to just focus on what Eddie just said. And Eddie, I respect it. You know, at first when you said, I don't want to get the politics involved, it made me think about the belts. And for me, the belts define a champion. And you don't want to be in a sport where you don't know who's the true champion of the sport. You get me? Like, football, you got the Super Bowl. They won the Super Bowl, they're the champion. You don't want to be like, yeah, they're the champion, but... My man, we went 15 and 16 and 0 in one season. Uh, the Patriots went 16 and 0 in the season. And the Saints went like, I don't know, 15 to 1 or something like that. A team that went 15 and 1, 16 and 0, face off in the Super Bowl. Like, face off, and that's the Super Bowl. Like, they're the, they're the best versus the best. We, we want to define champion. But I also get it. You don't want the governing bodies dictating the sport like you know you got the best fight on your hands right here and they don't respect it they don't want you they don't want you coming in and just like making the sport less than what it is so i see i see both sides but i respect what it, it's, it's 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 a bob era moment where it's like i'm not losing money built I, I'm not losing money when I could have built a, a house in the hills of London you hear me that he pulled the Bob Aaron moment right there and I respect it but it, it it's just good for boxing right now. It's like it's it's spicy. It's it's so it's so. Yo, but Nick, can I ask you a question though? What's up? <clears throat> like, cause you said like we just it, we need the belts to dictate who's the clear champion, right? So if let's say we strip today, yeah, you know, all his belts. If we strip and Pacquiao just got stripped of one belt, I believe. Yeah. You still look at these men as champions. Bro. They stripped Pacquiao out of WBA? Yeah. I think when so. When did they, did they do that? No. Oh, no, they, if he fights, yo, my bad. If he fights Connor, then they'll strip him. So, they'll strip him. Like, but but I'm saying. Pacquiao. Like, if they if Floyd came back, right? Let, let's say right before Floyd retired. 
they were like, yo, we're going to strip you if you fight Connor or whatever. Let's say, and he goes, hey, whatever. Uh, people, I don't think people going to look at this dude as. People, him, people, like, people, gonna want, like, nah, people going to be like, nah, he's still Pacquiao. But I'm just saying, like. I think people do the same. We thing. want that true defined champion. Champion has its own definition. This has its own title. Like, then we're not, we're belittling the title of a champion when we like, nah, we want to see the biggest fight ever when the champion is the biggest fight ever. Like, you know, some people work. So let's say the next new upcoming fighter gets these belts that's been released or relinquished by the fighters who carried them. And now he's like, he carries all these belts and like nobody respects him. Like you just got belts, but you ain't beat this man. You ain't beat that man. You ain't beat AJ. You ain't beat Fury. You ain't beat Wilder. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but that doesn't apply to this situation, though. Wilder didn't beat. No, yeah, it guys. does. Wilder, Wilder didn't beat. No, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying. I'm just saying. Hold on. Explain to me how, because you're claiming that all right. oh, that's necessary for a champion, but you have champions who didn't beat those guys either. <laughs> all right, cool. Yeah, all right. No, no, I'm beat most of those guys. You name is Anthony Joshua. Yeah, right. we still recognize this champion, and Wilder sure. still recognize this champion. In fact, many people have Fury recognized as the guy. Yes, in the division. So. I you're saying all that to say what? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm saying this. I'm saying, um, uh, Eddie Hearns was saying, I have to relinquish all these belts because we have the biggest fight on our hands. Let me get, let me get, I got to get all my thoughts together. Because he said, we have the biggest fight on our hands. So when you relinquish the belts, like, I, I agree with Eddie 100%. Like, you will have to make this power move. But it's a power move to that may affect the sport of boxing. You get what I'm saying? Or, no, you know, no, no. Let me ask you a question. All right, so he, so so time out. Said that they should have said walk with me before we. No, walk. Yeah, I should have said walk with me. That's that's why I was I was thinking when I was thinking all this. I should have said I'm gonna start to say this point off with of walk with me. But listen, <laughs> why can't he look at his watch? <laughs> Gee, chill out. So listen, all right. The the point I'm trying to make here is. Every fighter, when they get before before you get into boxing, before you did, like, and when you look at all sports, all organized sports, the key to winning something is a championship or championship belt, championship ring, championship trophy, things of that nature. Now, once you eliminate that from the sport, what what are we fighting for? Is it the name of a person or the name of the sport? Like, you fighting for the championship belt? So if Eddie eliminates that just for the biggest fight, now you eliminate something from boxing. Now you make you belittle the belts. Now the next up and coming fighter who organizes these belts, people are not gonna respect it because you're not, you know, it's not the best fight in the best, you know, or it's not, it's not, it's not as you. Okay, you, Ned. So how is it not the best fight in the best? When the guys who relinquish in the belts are the guys who won the belts, because the guys that they who are the best, and that they let the belts go in their fight. Right. For, for you instance, know that, yeah. Ned, please, no, Ned, please, because here, here's this is a teachable moment to the people. Yes, yes, just, just please, Ned. I don't want to mute you respectfully, but this is a teachable moment to the people who get mad at us. We are the boxing bros. We have a list of topics that we yeah. want to discuss. We have a certain yeah. amount of time in which we need to discuss it. We just gave Ned all this time to get his point across, and he still hasn't gotten to the point. Meanwhile, I'm still waiting for my airtime so I can go on. Right. And Ned still hasn't completed his point. So sometimes we come in to help Ned to his point so that the show can move on and we can get to our other topics. But you people at home get mad because you don't, un well, not most of you, most of you understand, but to the small minority that say, well, let Ned talk. We'll let Ned talk. We just let Ned talk. And he still hasn't gotten to the point yet. Get to the point. All right, um, the point of everything is when you disregard all the belts, the champion, now you belittle sport. And that's basic point blank period. Like, so now that's that's all I got to okay, say. So Eddie you're, Hearns, you're so playing your with fire. Is, your point is. But I respect they, it. If they relinquish the belts, they yeah. would belittle the sport, basically. Yeah. Because it's because I don't need the belts to be great. Because people assume that the guys with the belts are the best and they're the champions. Is yeah. that your point? Yeah. Thank you, Ned. Well, Charles Martin was the best when he had the belt. That's yeah. what Ned said. No, but he worked hard for but something. Every, everybody, in the history books. He worked, he worked hard, you said? 
He's in the history. Wait, tell me book. how. Tell me how Charles Martin won the fight. Won his He's belt. in the history book. No, tell me how Charles Martin won hey, his man. Belt. No I'm Ned. Still, he he. No Ned. He worked hard for the belt. So please tell me how he won it. I'm still a casual at the end of the day. He's at the right place at the right time. He's yeah. in the right fight when the when the guy he was fighting got injured and couldn't continue, so he won the belt. True. Yeah, it shows right. He was in the right place at the right time to get picked to fight for that vacant title. <laughs> so, 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 so. Anyways, yeah, and um, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, bro. Do yeah, you think? Let me let me just let me just go in because this this is going on a lot longer than I anticipated that it would. That was All a right. long walk. <laughs> that was a long walk. I, we're man. home now. We're home. Well, he, he, home. He, didn't, he didn't even he didn't even land a plane. We had to land it for him <laughs> again. But let this be a lesson to you who get mad at us for helping the boy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Hey, let this be a lesson to you. That gives Ned's cousin showing love. <laughs> nah, I've seen a few people like, oh, it's, it's, yo, bro, we got things we got to do. We got topics we need to hit. Hey. We're out of here in like an hour, and this dude still hasn't landed the plane. All right, anyway. <laughs> Yo, to get into the point for me the wbo shouldn't even be recognized the wbo shouldn't even be necessary for undisputed back in the tyson era back in the lennox lewis era you only needed three titles the wbc the wba and the ibf mike tyson was undisputed with three lennox lewis was undisputed with three Adding a fourth belt just creates even more chaos, as you're seeing right now. Because <clears throat> if we eliminate the WBO, we would have Undisputed. The fight could go on for Undisputed right now. There would be no hiccups to Undisputed. But the problem is the WBO was now recognized as a major title. The WBO has been around since 1988. In 1988, the WBO was just as good as the IBO. In 1988, the WBO was just as good as the IBO. It was the little 10 carat ring you had on to balance things out, right? But someone polished the turd and made the WBO a, a major title in 2004. So in 2004, the WBO became a major title in which now you need four belts to become undisputed. Making a different standard than Tyson had, that Lennox Lewis had and the undisputed champions before them. So here's what you have. Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua could take place and it could happen in 2021. And they could fight with all the belts that made Lewis undisputed, that made Tyson undisputed. But since 2004, the WBO is now necessary. And it is now the WBO holding up the biggest fight in boxing history because they don't want to grant Joshua an exception. I would say you should grant Ned. Put that finger down, bro. Again, I just want to say one again. thing, but I wait. I wait. No, see that. no, you know what? I just want to say I didn't know. I had. I didn't have this knowledge. Strictly for the people, you remember this. Go ahead, Ned. Yes, I just. I didn't have knowledge. I didn't have that knowledge. I didn't know that about the belts. I'm just gonna say that I didn't know that at all. I wouldn't have made that argument with the belts, but I want to just say this. I'm strictly for Eddie Hearns, but I'm strictly for Eddie Hearns. Yo, you sound like a. I ain't gonna say. No, no, G. I sound like a G, but let's go. <laughs> you sound like a G, pun intended. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for that laugh, Ned. At least you snuck that one in there. All right. Oh, um, no. But getting back to it, the WBO wasn't always necessary. And so now what you have is the biggest fight that can be made, Joshua Fury being held up by a sanctioning body that refuses to grant an exception, right? And so one point that Eddie Hearn brought up is exhibitions are going to become the norm. And they're going to become the norm because at least people are seeing two people fight that they're interested in. You're willing to pay money for things that you're interested in. You're willing to spend a certain amount of money for things that you're interested in. For example, if I want um, some Air Max 97s, and I want them in a certain color. Let's just say hypothetically for the sake of this uh, discussion, the color is gold. I'm willing to pay like $150 to $200 for some gold Air Max 97s, but you come out with some blue ones. Yeah, I want an Air Max 97s, but not those. I'm not paying $200 for those. 
You're not giving me the air matches that I want. Yeah, we want to see fights, but you're not giving us the fights we want to see, so we're not paying for those. You might, you, we're not paying for the blue Air Max 97s. It's not what we're doing. Either you bring us the gold ones, or we're going to buy a different sneaker. You see what I'm saying? And here's this is what's happening with boxing. You're not giving us the fights we want. And what's preventing it at this particular point in time is a title that didn't even become relevant until 2004. All right, and so... Um, for me, there should be a new rule in boxing because the way these sanctioning bodies have things set up, it's impossible for someone to become undisputed because you get all these belts. You got to fight. Uh, Joshua just fought. Was it the IBF's mandatory? Now he has to fight the WBO's mandatory, and then the W. Then like the WBA is gonna sneak in and say, "Well, now you got to do our mandatory." Why is it so complicated? Give him the same mandatory. I want a new rule implemented that when a fighter takes the risk of becoming unified champion, a benefit of becoming unified champion is the sanctioning bodies have to work together to give the fighter the same mandatory. So that way it would be easier for us to have an undisputed fighter because Pulev or Usyk could have been the one guy that Joshua just fought. And then the cla- then the path to Fury is, is great. And the same for Fury. Why make it so difficult for guys to become undisputed champion? If undisputed champion is the greatest prize in sports, why you make it so difficult? In the sport, why do you make it so difficult for it to accomplish? And it's not difficult in terms of the fighter's boxing ability to make it happen. It's difficult because the sanctioning bodies want to keep trying to implement ways to get money and make it difficult for the belts to unify. So I want the same mandatory for unified champions, which means Earl Spence, what uh, Earl Spence is a WBC and IBF. They should work together and give him the same mandatory. What it does is one, it allows him to know who he has to fight and that being the only guy he has to fight, but also it allows him to go after another belt. And I, and I want that for all unified uh, champions. Um, it's getting to the point where the, these belts and the sanctioning bodies are the death of boxing. What I will give Ned is the fight does have more lore. It does have more selling power. When you say this fight is for undisputed, when you say this fight is for the first undisputed heavyweight champion since Lennox Lewis, that has a lot of selling power, but these guys can sell the fight without the belts. We all know they're the best. We know who Josh was beat. We know who Fury's beaten. You can take the belts from them and you can give one belt to Wilder. You can give one belt to Dilly and you can give one belt to Usyk and you can give the other to Joseph Parker if you want or Andy Ruiz, whomever you want. We all know the two guys everyone wants to see. And much like the Tyson and Roy Jones exhibition, they're still the gold sneaker. So we're paying to see them and we're not paying to see the blue sneakers when you make Dillian fight this guy or whatever. No, the gold standard. People are going to pay for what they want to see regardless of if there's a title on the line. You think that Mike Tyson and Roy Jones sold 1.2, 1.8 million because the WBC decided to put a little title on the line? Is that that what you think? No, they would have done those numbers without the belt. Joshua and Fury are going to do numbers without the belt. So they might as well get on board with what the people want to see because the people are going to know who's the best. They don't need the belts. The belts will help because you get to add undisputed, which is a cool selling point. But when all is said and done, they're going to sell anyway. And my last point, sanctioning bodies. How about you do the sport of boxing a favor? If you want to force fighters to fight someone, why not force them to fight other champions? Why not force them to unify? Why not force WBO? Why not force TC and Earl Spence to fight? Are you going to strip them of the belts? That's what I would love to see. That's when it would matter. That's when taking your belts would mean something. When the biggest fight in the division is Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford, and they can't seem to make it work, do like the WBC did to Riddick Bowe and say, y'all make this work. Y'all make this work by this time. If you don't, both of you are getting stripped. That would help boxing. Force unification bouts, not fighting mandatories that people don't want to see. Because then you will be forcing the fights that people will want to pay, the gold sneaker, and then the sport of boxing will be in good shape.
too. Even Fight Night only recognized three belts. Please like us <laughs> on Instagram and Twitter, and please check out our podcast on all major streaming services. We are the Boxing Bros. And don't you hate when you go ask for a size nine and they bring you out a size 11? Bro, you ask for a size nine. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Make it when you ask for a size 13, they bring you out a size nine. Like, like that's the worst, man. <laughs> or the, shoe, the shoe feels like a size nine. Like, it's, it's like, you can fit it. You can fit it. <laughs> Some people do that, though. They stuff them. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> We could have been flawless yep. Flying up to make people's mouths drop jawless How can two years be a race of one August And you know I have my pride so I had to get brolic All in all I can't call it Just know you're my queen Wish I was denim Cause then I be in your jeans Can't fight fate And you've been loving me since your teens But when you can't move forward You gotta wipe your slate clean